All right, let's do this. This is where logs get fun, because now we're solving logs and exponential equations. So we must remember all our log properties, and now we have one new log property. It's very similar to the exponential property where the bases are the same, you set the exponents equal to each other. Well, now we have this property for logs. If the log bases are the same, then you'll set the inside of the log equal to each other. So you see here, log base A of M equal to log base A of N. If the log bases are the same, then m equals n. So today we're going to be using the product to sum, quotient to difference, the power rule, and now we have this fourth property of log equalities, and we'll use that. So everything's going to be put to work today. Uh, what else you see here is that remember that if you're stuck in a log format, Remember that logs can be converted to exponentials, or if you're stuck in an exponential format, exponentials can be converted to logs because they are inverses of each other. And then when solving logs, make sure to check your domain and avoid any extraneous values. Okay, so here we go. Lots of fun today. Okay. So 2 log base 5 of x equal to log base 5 of 9. Well, we want to solve for x here, but in order to do so, we have to get rid of this 2. This 2 has to go back on top of that x. So now you'll get log base 5 of x squared equal to log base 5 of 9. And now, by using the new property we learned above, the log bases are the same. Therefore, you set the inside of the logs equal to each other. Parentheses, parentheses, parentheses. There we go. Now, by that log equality property, you'll get x squared equal to 9. Square root both sides, and you get x equals plus or minus three. Now we do have to exclude a value because remember logs, well this log, this domain is anything greater than zero. So this means that for plus or minus three, we have to ignore the minus and only accept the positive three. So our answer is just gonna be x equals There you go. And this use that log equality property we just learned. I'll write it over here, sure. Okay. Oh, this also used power rule. Should I write all the rules down? I guess so. Actually, this one is n log x equal to log x to the n. There you go. Maybe to save time, I'll come back and fill out the properties like I did in the last one. Yeah. Okay. Number two, same exact thing. 3 log base 2 of x equal to negative log base 2 of 27. We want to solve for x, but in order to solve for x, we have to get rid of the 3 and you have to get rid of the negative, which means the three is going back on the x, and the negative is going on the 27. So this means we'll get log base two of x cubed equal to log base two of 27 to the negative one. Okay, and now, same base, same base, log equality property, and we're gonna get 
x cubed equals 27 to the negative 1, which means the same as x cubed equals 1 over 27. And then you will cube root both sides, and we'll get our answer of x equals 1 third. There you go. And again, the domain for this log is anything greater than zero, so one third is greater than zero, so it works. Okay. All right, next, log base five of x plus six plus log base five of x plus two equal to one. So this one, we need to combine into one single logarithm. So we see that these are connected by addition and are the same base. So this means we're gonna use the product to sum backwards. So we're using sum to product. So this will become log base five of x plus six times x plus two equal to one. So we have just put them together by the sum to product, right? We worked it backwards. Okay, well now we realize that we're stuck. So if you're ever stuck in log format, remember that you can always rearrange from log to exponential. So what we're gonna do is take base five and raise it to the first power. So we're gonna get five to the first equal, and remember, when you convert from log to exponential, you get five to the first equal to the inside of the logarithm. So maybe I should put brackets there. Which is gonna be set equal to x plus six times x plus two. Okay, and now we have to solve for x. We now are gonna be given a quadratic equation. So five to the first is five. Foil this out, x squared plus eight x plus 12. Move the five over, zero equals x squared plus eight x plus seven. factor and you'll get x plus one and x plus seven and therefore x equals negative one and x equals negative seven. Now of course we must check our work. So what is the domain of both of these log functions? So for the first log, if you look at it, so here we'll write check. Check your work. Okay, so the domain of the first log is anything greater than negative six, right? So we'll say log base five of x plus six, the domain, is anything greater than negative six. And then for log base five of x plus two, the domain is x greater than negative two. So if you put these domains together, this means that we honestly can't have, we, we have to have any x value greater than negative two. So that's only gonna work. And the way you can find that out is just take these x values and plug them into the original equation. So if we check, you'll get log base five, and we'll plug negative one in first. Log base five of negative one plus six plus log base five of negative one plus two equal to one. You'll get log base five 
of five plus log base five of one equal to one. And this works out. We don't have to go any further unless we want to because we do not have any negative numbers inside our parentheses. But if we did go further, if you remember your log properties, log base five of five would become one. Log base five of one would become zero. And one plus zero is one. So this means that x equals negative one checks out. And then if you were to check negative seven, you'd have log base five of negative seven plus six plus log base five of negative seven plus two equal to one. Here you'd get log base five of negative one plus log base five of negative five. And right here, you should have red flags go off because we can never ever take the log of a negative number. So this does not check out. And another thing is that, well, does negative seven actually fit in any of these domains? And the answer is no. So negative seven is out. That's our extraneous value. And again, the easiest way to check that, you don't, you can check the domain or just plug the number in to see if it works. Probably easier to just plug the number in, right? Okay, good fun. Let's do it again. All right, so now we're dealing with the natural log. And this looks like the natural log of x equal to natural log of x plus six minus the natural log of x minus four. So in order to solve for x, we need to combine the right side into one single logarithm. So we see that they're connected by subtraction, which means we're gonna use the quotient to difference backwards. So difference to quotient. The left side of the equation is fine. So this will remain the natural log of x, but on the right side, we'll now combine it into one single logarithm. Natural log, I'll put brackets there, of x plus six over x minus four. x plus six over x minus four. And now we can use the log equality property that we learned today, that new property, because these logs, whoops, these logs, have the same base. Remember that the base of the natural log is E. So these logs have the same base. Therefore, you can set the inside of the logs equal to each other. And solve for x. So here you'll cross multiply. So you can put x over one and then cross, cross. And we'll get x times x minus four equal to x plus six. Distribute the x. You'll get x squared minus four x equal to x plus six. Take these terms, move them over to the left side, and you'll get x squared minus 5x minus 6 equal to 0. x squared minus 5x minus 6 equal to 0. And now factor. You should get x, what are we going to have? Plus 1 and x minus 6 equal to 0 x squared, negative 6 plus 1, negative 5, negative 6, and we'll get x equals negative 1 and x equals 6. And 
Now check. Which one works? Which one's extraneous? So for negative one, you'll get the natural log of negative one equal to the natural log of negative one plus six minus the natural log of negative one minus four. All right, those red flags should be going off already because right there, the natural log of negative one. Can't take the natural log of a negative number. So this will not work out. No go. So this means that x equals negative 1 is out. You can check x equals 6, and you'll get the natural log of 6 equal to the natural log of 6 plus 6 minus the natural log of 6 minus 4. And hey, this checks out because you're not going to get any negative numbers. You get natural log of 6 equal to natural log 12 minus natural log 2. And let's just finish this up. Let's see if it actually works. By natural log 6, by the reverse difference to quotient, you'll get natural log 12 over 2, which gives you natural log 6 equal to natural log 6. Hey, look at that. Checks out. Okay, and if you were to check domain, well, the domain of the first log, so the domain of, okay, I write this. I'll just write and erase it real fast. The domain of that log is x greater than zero, which means you couldn't plug negative one in even if you wanted to. The domain of this log is x greater than negative six, and the domain of that log is x greater than four. So those domains tell you what numbers you can actually plug into those log functions. Okay, like, like I said, it might be easier just to plug the number in. Okay, whichever you prefer. Okay, let's keep moving. All right, three log base seven x minus log base seven of two, equal to two log base seven of four, okay? Once again, we need to solve for x, but we have some cleaning up to do. So first thing would be to combine these two. They're connected by subtraction. They're the same log base. So put them together into one single logarithm by using the difference to quotient. So here, we'll get three times log base seven of x over two. Three times log base seven of x over two. Equal to, and in the same move, this two can go there. Log base seven of four squared. Reverse power rule, right? Reverse power rule. Okay, which means we could probably do it one more time because we can take this three and put it on top of this log. So what we'll end up with is log base seven of x over two cubed equal to log base seven of four squared. Look at that. How about I do this just to make it look proper? Okay. And now by the log equality property, these bases are the same. So you set the insides equal to each other. So you get x over two cubed equal to four squared. And now we just solve for x. So this will give me x cubed over 8 equal to 16. And then we'll multiply the 8 to the right side. 
and you'll get x cubed equals, what is 16 times 8? 128. And then does that cube root nicely? Because then that's what we're going to do next. Cube root, cube root. And we're going to get x equals, and the cube root of 128 is not nice. Hmm. So then you'll get the cube root of 128. Let's do some breakdowns though. Let's see. Maybe we can make it look nice. One twenty eight. So I can break this into let's see. One twenty eight divided two. So you get two and sixty four. And then we're looking at cube roots. So I think. Yes, good. So we can definitely cube root 64. So this will become, so 64, I'll write this. Cube root two, cube root 64, and this becomes four. So this means that our final answer is four cube root two. There we go. If it wanted decimal number, which I doubt it, you'd get 5.04. Okay, cool. All right, good times. See x over two, just reworking my steps. And Good. Okay. Also, the domain of this log, where to look at it, is x greater than zero, and four cube root of two is definitely greater than zero. Okay. Six. <laughs> Natural log x minus three square root natural log x plus two. All right. Well, this should remind you of something that we learned in the very beginning of the semester. It's called u substitution. That's what we're gonna use here. So remember that using u substitution, you'll let u equal the middle terms variable. Here, we're going to consider the square root of natural log x is the middle terms variable. So u would equal the square root of natural log x. And in order to make a substitution for the leading term, what would we do to the substitution? We would square it. <laughs> I was like, raise it by two. That's the same thing. That's too many words. Square. So you would say u squared equals the square root of the natural log of x squared, which would give us natural log x. So this means that the leading term is now covered by u squared. Okay, now let's do our substitution. And you'll get u squared minus 3u plus 2 equal to zero. And our only hope is that, is this factorable? And yes, you'll get u minus one and u minus two equal to zero. u squared, negative two, negative one, negative three, and two, and then solve for u. u equals one, u equals two, but remember that u, is the square root of the natural log. U 
is the square root of the natural log. Okay. So then, let's look at this closer, because now in order to get rid of that square root, you must square both sides. So we'll say, stop it. We'll say squared and we'll get natural log x equals one and natural log x equals four. Oh man, so this is great. Because now we still have to solve for x, and the only way to do this is to convert from log to exponential. Here is going to be natural log to exponential. So remember when we do that, we'll write this little base of e in there is the base of the natural log is e. Now we'll say e to the first is equal to x. And there's our first answer. e to the first is equal to x, or that's just e. And then do it again. E to the fourth is equal to x. And there's our second answer. Oh, that's a good time. You've got to enjoy that one. And there's our two answers. Care to see which one is extraneous or not, or do they both work? Let's see, I think we have time. So if we plug in E first, right? Let's say check. So at X equals E, we get natural log E minus three square root, natural log E plus two equal to zero. Well, remember that the natural log of E is one. So you get three times the square root of one plus two equal to zero, and you'd get one minus three plus two equal to zero, and that would give you negative two plus two equal to zero. Check. Good times. Well, what if you checked e to the fourth? Natural log e to the fourth minus three square root natural log e to the fourth plus two equal to zero. By power rule, this would become four natural log e minus three square root four natural log e plus two equal to zero. Remember that the natural log of e is one, so you'd get four times one minus three times the square root of four plus two equal to zero. And then, my goodness, you'd get four minus three times two plus two equal to zero. Four minus six plus two equal to zero. Minus two plus two equal to zero checks out. Guess what? Both of those answers work. Yeehaw. Okay, good time. I think that does it for solving logarithmic equations. So like I said, I'll go back and I will rewrite the properties that I used. Okay, now we get to exponential equations. So remember that if you get stuck in exponential, you can always rearrange from exponential to logarithm. So we're remembering all our exponential properties. We're remembering all our logarithmic properties. We're remembering that you can, uh, <clears throat> you can convert from log to exponential and exponential 
to logarithm. So let's do it. So first up, 2 to the x equals 5. Well, there's no way we can change 5 into a base of 2. So this means we're stuck, which means if you're stuck, you convert to logarithm. So this means that when you convert to log, the two become the base of the exponential function becomes the base of the logarithm. So this means you'll get log base two of the outside number of five equal to the exponent x. <clears throat> and there you go. Now, if it wants a decimal number, we're going to have to do change of base, which means we can rewrite this as log 5 over log 2 equal to x. Now, like I said, it may take this answer, but if it does want the decimal answer, then I guess we'll use our calculator. I'll say log 5 divide log 2, log 5 divide log 2, enter. And I think it wants three decimal places, so we'll say x is approximately 2.322. There you go. All right, back to it. So, same thing here. This one's going to be a little harder to look at. So, we have 1.2 to the x equal to 0 0.5 to the negative x. So, what we're going to do is convert this because there's no way to change 1.2 into a base of 0.5 and change 0.5 into a base of 1.2. So, we must convert from log. I mean from exponential to logarithm. So pay close attention. This is no different than what we did above. There's just more terms to deal with. So we'll use the left side. So the 1.2 is the base we're going to use for our log. So this means that we're going to get log base 1.2 of the outside number. So this whole thing is considered the outside number. So I'll put that there, right? The outside number of 0 0.5 raised to the negative x set equal to the exponent of x. Ooh, crazy, hard to look at, I know. Trust me. Okay. So then we just converted from exponential to logarithm, which means we're going to use another logarithmic property. So we see that this log, the inside, is being raised to an exponent. So this means that we're going to use the power rule. This means that this negative x is coming to the front. So my next rewrite is negative x times log base 1.2 of 0 0.5 equal to x. This is super conceptual. So it's, if it's hard to see, just take it slow. And now, once we get here, we must remember that we're solving for x. 
So this means that we're going to take this nasty beast, and since it's negative, we're going to add it to the right side. I'll leave all that there. Why not? This means you're going to get 0 equal to x plus x log base 1.2 of 0 0.5. Okay, so we just took that big nasty chunk of math, moved it to the right. Remember that you're still solving for x, so we see on the right side we have a common factor of x. You see how this is purely algebraic, because now what you're going to do next is factor out the x. This should get your algebra engine going. You're like, all right, we got this. You're using basic algebra methods. They're just this common looking thing, this difficult looking thing called a log. So we factor out the x and you're left with one plus log base 1.2 of 0 0.5. And now, what we're gonna do next is gonna be very, well, the answer is gonna be very disappointing. But what we're gonna do next is, is again, basic algebra. To get x by itself, you are going to divide by this ugly statement. And with all that being done, This means that our answer, because zero over anything, zero over one plus log base 1.2 of 0 0.5 is still zero. So our answer here is x equals zero. Oh, it's awful. I know. This, uh, pointing all that for zero okay so there is another way to solve this in case that was just way too hard to look at maybe the second method might be easier so let's see we'll say option two I'll have 1.2 to the x equals 0 0.5 to the negative x. And what I'm going to do here is apply logs to both sides. So I'm going to say log of 1.2 to the x equal to log of 0 0.5 to the negative x. So we apply logs to both sides. And then we do power rule on both of them. So the x's come down. x of log 1.2 equal to negative x of log 0 0.5. We're solving for x. So this guy gets added to the left side. So you'll have x log 1.2 plus x log 0 0.5 equal to 0, factor the x out, x times log 1.2 plus log 0 0.5 equal to 0, and then divide by all of that. And we're still going to get the same answer 
of zero. So maybe that one's better. Maybe that one's easier to look at. But just know you have options. Okay. So there you go. Those are your options. First one, convert from exponential to log. Option two, apply logs to both sides and solve for x. Okay. Either way, it's messy, right? Okay. So let's do this one. 0.3 times 4 to the 0.2x equal to 0.2. So we want to solve for x, which means we're going to convert from exponential to logarithm. But the first thing we should get rid of is this 0.3. So we're going to divide by 0.3. And this should give me 4 to the 0.2x equal to 0 0.2 over 0.3. All right. I'm just going to clean this up a bit because 0.2 over 0.3, we know that you can never have decimals in your denominator. There's a lovely little decimal trick. You will take the decimal in the denominator and move it over until you get a whole number. So this means we'll move the decimal over one place. And whatever, however many spaces you move the decimal in the denominator is however many spaces you move the decimal in the numerator. So that means we'll move this decimal one place. So this is just going to give us the fraction of two-thirds. Look at that. So now I have 4 to the 0.2x equals two-thirds. And now let's convert from exponential to logarithm. So here's the base we're going to choose. So this is going to become log base 4 of the outside number of two thirds equal to the exponent of 0 0.2x. There we go. Look at that. And now what we're going to do next is divide by 0.2. Or wait, first we should do, since we're going to calculate this, uh, let's do change of base on the left side first. So this will become log of 2 thirds over the log of 4 equal to 0.2x. OK. And then we'll move this up here. So I have, and I'll calculate it now. So let's see. I'll do log of two thirds divide log of four. All right, perfect. And now to three decimal places. Negative 0 0.292 equal to 0.2x. We will now divide by 0.2. And we'll get negative 1.462 equal to x. Just ugly, I know. Okay. Oh, so you could do option two on this one as well, but you still 
have to move that point three over before you do so. Okay. Let's keep moving. Number four. Same thing here. Four thirds to the one minus x equals five to the x. So what we're gonna do here is again, convert from exponential to logarithm. So the base we're choosing here is four thirds. So we're gonna say log base four thirds of the outside number five to the x is equal to the exponent one minus x. There you go. Just convert it from exponential to log. Okay. And now apply more log properties. We know that by exponential, or sorry, by log properties, by the power rule, this x is coming to the front. So you'll get x times log base four thirds of five equal to one minus x. Okay, and now solve for x. So take this x and move it to the right by addition. You'll get x log base four thirds of five plus x equal to one. And now we have a common factor of x, x, x. Factor it out. And log base four thirds of five plus one equal to one. And now divide by all that nastiness. I'm just going to say divide. And we'll get our answer of x equals 1 over log base 4 thirds of 5 plus 1. There it is. Breathe it in. It's disgusting. Okay. Well, I think we have time for this video. So let's look at option two. So start off, four thirds to the one minus x equals five to the x. Apply logs to both sides. And then use the power rule. So you'll get one minus x times the log of four thirds equal to x log five. And we're gonna have to distribute now that one minus x. So you're gonna get log of four thirds minus x log of four thirds equal to x log five, add this log over to the right, so you get log of four thirds equal to x log five plus x log four thirds, factor the x out, And you'll get log five plus log four thirds. Divide by that. Oh man. And you will get let's see, I can probably write it in the middle here. 
here somewhere. I'll write it on the outside here. That's fine. And you will get log of four thirds over log five plus log of four thirds equal to x. Oh my goodness. Now, these answers are equivalent. It's just a fun process to show how they're equivalent as well. So these two are definitely equivalent. I'm not sure which one my math lab will take though. I guess you'll let me know, huh? Okay, but just know that these two answers are equivalent. And if somebody, if somebody can show me that they are equivalent by algebraic manipulation, maybe I'll give you some extra credit points. Yeah, just remind me. And in order to show the equivalence, I'll give you a hint. You must use change of base and common denominators. That's all I'm going to tell you. Okay, let's keep moving. Okay. So, number five. E to the x plus three equals pi to the x. So now this one uh, will again change from exponential into logarithm, but since this has a base of e, we're gonna convert it into the natural log. So when we convert, we'll get that here's our base we're gonna use. So you'll get natural log base e of the outside number, pi x equal to the inside, not the inside, the exponent, x plus three. See, I'm going crazy. Logs are making me crazy. Okay. So we just converted from exponential to natural log. Only reason is because it's base e. And now I'm gonna rewrite this as just natural log pi x equal to x plus three. Okay, because we know that the base of the natural log is e, so it doesn't have to be written there. And now we'll use power rule. So this means that this x is coming to the front and we'll get x natural log pi equal to x plus three we're solving for x, so this x subtracts to the left. So you'll have x natural log pi minus x equal to three. Factor out the x, and you'll get x times natural log pi minus one equal to three, and then divide, and we'll get, there, once again, write it, right? Divide, and we'll get x equals three over natural log pi minus one. There you go. Three over natural log pi minus one. Whew. Okay. How many more? Oh boy. Okay. A lot more here. <laughs> okay. So let's keep moving. Do it again. 
Here's the base we're going to use on this one. Convert from exponential to log. So log base 5 of the outside number of 3 to the 3x plus 2 set equal to the exponent of x minus 2. And then power rule. So this 3x plus 2 comes down to the front. 3x plus 2 times log base 5 of 3 equal to x minus 2. We're going to have to distribute that 3x plus 2. So you'll get 3x log base 5 of 3 plus 2 log base 5 of 3 equal to x minus 2. Now what we're going to do is move the x over to the left. So say move this x over to the left and this log over to the right. So what we're going to have is 3x log base 5 of 3 minus x equal to negative 2 minus 2 log base 5 of 3. Factor out the x. x times 3 log base 5 of 3 minus 1 equal to negative 2 minus 2 log base 5 of 3. Divide and we're going to get x equals negative 2 minus 2 log base 5 of 3 all over 3 log base 5 of 3 minus 1. There it is. That's all she wrote. Unfortunately, that's all she wrote. Okay. Moving on for time purposes. All right. Okay, so next is 4 to the x minus 2 to the x minus 12. So this is going to use u substitution, but in order to use u substitution, we're going to have to break down some terms here. So what we're going to say is, well, we're not going to break down the 12. We're only going to break down uh, the 4 to the x. That's it. And I'll show you why. So we have to, we have to solve this by u substitution. So this means that u is going to equal 2 to the x. So u equals 2 to the x, which means we need to create a substitution for the leading term. Create a substitution for the leading term. Well, if we do that, what we normally do is square it. So we say u squared equals 2 to the x squared, which gives me 2 to the 2x. Well, the big question here is, is 4 to the x the same as 2 to the 2x? And that answer is yes. Because, let's look here, 4 to the x is the same as 2 squared to the x, which is 2 to the 2x. So this means that 4 to the x is taken care of by u squared. Crazy. Trust me, I know. Okay. So now we rewrite our substitutions as u squared minus u minus 12 equal to 0. And factor. Hopefully this factors, I think it does. What is this, u minus four times u plus three equal to zero. u squared, three u, negative four u, negative u, negative 12, good. And then you'll get u equals four and u equals negative three. But what was u? u was, 2 to the x.
u was 2 to the x. Okay. Well, first one's given. 2 to the x equals 4. Well, we can use exponential properties here and rewrite this as 2 to the x equals 2 to the second. Or if you knew already that 2 to the second would give you 4, then we know that x equals 2. Good there. Now for the second one, can we change 3, negative 3, into a base of 2? Well, we have no idea. So for this one, we must convert from exponential to logarithm. So here, you'll get log base 2 of negative 3 equal to x. And since there's a negative 3 inside my log, this means that there will not be a solution for this part. So we're going to say no solution there. Because there's a negative number inside my log. So x equals 2 is our only solution. Yeah. OK. Again, this one, a little trickier. So yes, we want u to equal our middle term, right? u to be our middle term. Well, we ran into an issue here. So if I say u equals 4 to the x plus 1, and we want to cover a substitution for the leading term, this means we would square it, and you'd get 4 to the x plus 1 squared, which would give me 4 to the 2 times x plus 1, which is 16, 4 to the 2x plus 1. Well, let's find out. 16x can be written as 4 squared to the x, which is just 4 to the 2x. If you expand this, you'll get 4 to the 2x plus 2. So we are missing something here, which means let's go ahead and look back at 4 to the x plus 1. All right, so what we're going to do is look at 4 to the x plus 1. By exponential properties, we can rewrite this as 4 to the x times 4 to the 1, which now can be rewritten as 4 times 4 to the x. Crazy, right? OK. Which means that my problem is now written as 16 to the x plus 4 times 4 to the x minus 3 equal to 0. Where now, I'm just going to let u equal 4 to the x. So now u is 4 to the x, and therefore u squared gives me 4 to the 2x, which checks out. So this means that 16x is now covered by u squared. OK, so here's what we have. u squared plus 4u minus 3 equals 0. All right, does this factor? And guess what that answer is? No. So we must complete the square on this. So this means you'll get u squared plus 4u equal to 3. And then we'll complete the square, 
which means you'll get u squared plus 4u plus 4 equal to 3 plus 4. We'll then factor the left side and you'll get u plus 2 squared equal to 7. And then you'll square root both sides. My goodness, this gets crazier and crazier, right? And you'll get u plus 2 equal to plus or minus square root 7. Okay. Now, coming back, move that 2 over, and you'll get u equals negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 7. But now our question is, what was u? u was 4 to the x. So now we get 4 to the x equals negative 2 plus or minus square root 7. And now we must convert from exponential to logarithm. I know, I know, guys. OK, so you'll get log base 4 of negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 7 equal to x. Now, what answer do we keep? Well, you can only take the log of positive numbers. So we have to ignore the negative because negative 2 minus the square root of 7 means we go more negative. Negative 2 plus the square root of 7, the square root of 7 is bigger than 2, so we'll keep the positive. So this means that we keep the plus, and our final, final answer is log base 4 of negative 2 plus square root 7 equals x. Now, wouldn't you like to check that work? Oof. All right. These are tough. I mean, they definitely take a lot of manipulating. Um, we'll get through them together, though. Please, please, please ask questions about these. We'll work through these. Don't let these get you down, right? Like, oh, that's a lot of math, it's heavy. If you take it step by step and you ask questions, we will get through this together. Okay, I am here for you. All right, we got to the last page, two left. Woo! Like I said, lots of manipulating. Maybe I'll split this video into two, we'll see. All right, so now we have 3 to the x minus 14 times 3 to the negative x equal to 5. Here, u substitution is not going to work yet because that's 3 to the negative x. So what we're going to do is rewrite this using negative exponents. So I'm going to rewrite this as 3 to the x minus 14 over 3 to the x equals 5. That uses the negative exponent rule, so it flips to the denominator. The next thing I'm going to do is get rid of that denominator. So in order to get rid of your denominator, you multiply by your denominator. So this means we're going to take both sides of this equation and multiply it by 3 to the x. So I'm going to say 3 to the x times 3 to the x minus 14 over 3 to the x equal to 3 to the x times 5. All right, so 3 over x was multiplied to both sides to get rid of the denominator. Now we distribute. And you'll get 3 to the x times 3 to the x. Since they are the same base, you add the exponents. So you'll get 3 to the 2x minus 3 to the x times 14 over 3 to the x, those denominators will cancel. So you'll be left with 14 equal to 5 times 3 to the x. You can't multiply that 5 and 3. Don't do it. OK, and now we're going to take this and move it to the left. So we'll have 3 to the 2x minus 5 times 3 to the x minus 14 equal to 0. Now we will u substitute. So this will be u. 
And lucky for us, u squared will take care of this substitution, which means we will now get u squared minus 5u minus 14 equal to zero. And I think this factors hopefully to u minus seven, u plus two equal to zero. You get u squared, two u minus seven, u negative five, u negative 14, therefore u equals seven, u equals negative two. But what was u? u was three to the x. Oh my goodness, right? So this becomes three to the x. Oops. 3 to the x equals 7. This becomes 3 to the x equals negative 2. And now in order to solve these, you must convert from log to x, or exponential to logarithm. So we'll convert the first one, and that becomes log base 3 of 7 equals x. There's our first answer. The next one becomes log base 3 of negative 2 equal to x. And this one can't work because of the negative inside. So this one is no solution. Oh, boy. All right. OK. And then last one. I, could, I thought this was going to be short today. I guess not. OK e to the x minus e to the negative x over 2 equal to 2. First thing we're going to do is take this 2 and multiply it to the right. So you get e to the x minus e to the negative x equal to 4. And then we're going to rewrite it using exponential properties as 1 over e to the x equal to 4. And then we're going to multiply both sides by e to the x. And once again, same base, e to the x times e to the x gives me e to the 2x minus 1 over e to the x times e to the x. Cancel. So you get 1 equal to 4 times e to the x. And then you'll move this e to the x over, and you'll get e to the 2x minus 4 e to the x minus 1 equal to 0. And then we'll use substitute. U will be e to the x. And lucky enough, u squared will cover e to the 2x. And we're going to get u squared minus 4u minus 1 equal to 0. Does it factor? Absolutely not. Move that 1 over. Complete the square. Factor. U minus two squared equals five. Square root both sides. Now you see how this seems repetitive, right? Once you get past all the crazy stuff, well, it still gets crazier, right? Then you have that. Then you add the two over. U equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 5. But then we must remember what U was. And U is whoop, right there, e to the x. So this becomes e to the x equals 2 plus or minus the square root of 5. But in order to solve for x, you must convert from log to exponential. Whew. Which means, oh yeah, we got a lot of room. Which means this will become, and you must convert to natural log. This will become natural log base e of 2 plus or minus the square root of 5 equal to x. Will we write it without the base? Because we know we don't need it there. And we know which values to get rid of. Square root of 5 is still bigger than 2. So 2 minus square root of 5 would give us a negative number inside the log. So the only number we keep is the positive. So we end up with our final answer of natural log of 2 plus square root of 5 equal to x. 
Oh boy. And that's it, y'all. I hope you enjoyed the ride. I'll look into the video and if it needs to be split in two, which it probably does, I'll split it into two. But other than that, remember your log properties. Choose option one or option two. Um, either way, my math lab should take it, I hope. If not, you'll definitely let me know. But knowing that there's two options to solve these lets you know that there's many methods, whichever fits you the best. All right, y'all. That's it. See you at the next one.